Gestaltism was a reaction against the structuralist framework. The pioneers of the Gestalt idea were Max Wertheimer, Wolfgang Kohler, and Kurt Kofka. Its roots go back to Aristotle, who said that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So very briefly, they said that it was not possible to investigate perception in terms of its components. Instead, we should focus on the organization of individual entities, I mean configurations of them, and try to understand emergent properties such as curvature and orientation. The research focus in the Gestalt framework was the problem of perceptual organization. These figures show some examples for emergent properties. Here are the point is that percepts like curvature or closure cannot be reduced to its component. Wartheimer describes this approach by saying that I stand at the window and see a house, trees, sky. Theoretically, I may say that there were 327 brightnesses and nuances of color. Do I have 327? No, I have sky, house, and trees. This was a quotation from 1923. The focus on perceptual organization led to Gestalt laws of grouping. Here are some of them. The first one is the law of proximity. And it says that the objects are perceived as if they form a group if they are close to each other. Another one was the law of similarity. To give an example, the law of color similarity uh, states that objects will be perceptually grouped together if they are similar to each other in their color. The principle of similarity applies to size, orientation, and texture. They proposed further laws of grouping, such as the law of continuity, which meant grouping by a good continuation, the law of closure, and the law of symmetry. Again, the important point to keep in mind is that they focused on perceptual grouping. They rejected the atomistic idea, the analogy in chemistry of the time. Maybe they were influenced by electricity and magnetism by making an analogy between force fields in physics and mental processes, but Gestalt theory is still influential, especially in dynamic models of perception. It was very different than the structuralist framework in many ways. However, it was similar in that both theoretical frameworks focused on the organization rather than the environment. The major theoretical framework that focused on the environment was the ecological optics proposed by J.J. Gibson and colleagues. Maybe one of the best characterization of the framework was given by Mace in 1977, saying that, ask not what is inside your head, but what your head is inside of. It is interesting. According to the ecological optics, the environment consisted of some substances, the medium, the gaseous atmosphere, and the surfaces that separate the substances from the medium. So the definition of the environment was richer than the definition of the space due to the specific emphasis on the concept of surfaces. That was indeed quite an impressive aspect of the framework. That is because surfaces have multiple processes such as layout, texture, being shaded, being able to reflect, and so on. All these concepts cannot be explained in terms of formal plane geometry. So according to the ecological approach to visual perception, lines and points were not enough to describe the environment. Another successful emphasis by ecological optics was the relationship between locomotion and the environment. Gibson says that if you take into account the optic flow which is created by locomotion, it is not necessary to conduct inferences to be able to achieve visual perception. So remember the inverse problem. We said that the inverse problem was solved by the brain. According to the ecological optics framework, the solution is in the optic flow. As we move in the environment, 
the perception of the three-dimensional world is not ambiguous anymore. So the structures in the amb ambient light stimulate the photoreceptors in the eyes. By means of the structures, we identify surfaces in the environment. The optic flow over time also provides depth perception, perception of motion by means of so-called motion gradients. Gibson was against the idea that visual perception is achieved by the transmission of information from the environment to the brain. Instead, he said that the stimulations in the retina led to firing of the neural structures in the brain. He used the mechanical resonance analogy to describe the relationship between the stimulation in the retina and the firing of the neurons in the brain. In nature, mechanical resonance very basically refers to a tuning between the structural frequencies of objects and the environment. Maybe it was not by chance that the idea of mechanical resonance was very popular at that time. In summary, Gibson proposed an elegant theoretical framework for visual perception. There are pros and cons of the theory. The weakness of the theory was its strong reaction against the concept of information processing, maybe, which gained popularity after then. In the next lecture, I will introduce more recent theoretical frameworks for visual cognition.